Hey, Clark, Nathan, how's it going? Uh, this is Mavidat. I'm trying to join, if I can, this conversation between uh, yourself, Azrinach, and Jack. Um, I'm a little bit concerned with your uh, video reply to Azrinach um, because I think you took it that uh, Azrinach was muddling the conversation when in fact he was actually trying to clarify um, or rather call for some clarity when he was talking about the standards of inconsistency and using logic as a method of truth, which it's not. Logic is a um, tool uh, that doesn't concern itself with the content to which it's applied. It can be true content or false content. Logic only guarantees, if you do it correctly, that your reasoning is valid. Not that it's true. Now, why is this important and how does common sense come into it? Well, appealing to common sense is good only when the sense is actually common. In this case, in the conversation between you and Jack, it's clearly not. And that's the problem. Um, I wanted to read to you this passage from Immanuel Kant, a German philosopher of the 18th century, who speaks to this issue of common sense in philosophical dialogue, and I think that it's particularly appropriate because um, Kant was dealing with the issue of logic and the appeals to common sense in his time. And this is what he says. This is from the Prolegomena, a short treatise in which Kant talks about lots of interesting things. But here's Kant talking about um, common sense. In order to do justice to the problem, now the problem he's talking about is um, the basis of pure thought, which is, for, for Kant, is logic, which is prior to experience. It, it abstracts away from experience. So in order to do ju justice to the problem, however, the opponents of this celebrated man, he's talking about David Hume, would have had to penetrate very deeply into the nature of reason so far as it is occupied solely with pure thought, something that, that did not suit them. They therefore found a more expedient means to obstinate without any insight, namely the appeal to common sense, ordinary common sense. It is in fact a great gift from heaven to possess right, or as it has recently been called, plain common sense. But it must be proven through deeds, by the considered and reasonable things one thinks and says and not by appealing to it as an oracle, when one knows of nothing c clever to advance in one's defense, to appeal to ordinary common sense, when insight and science run short, and not before, is one of the subtle discoveries of recent times, whereby the dullest windbag can confidently take on the most profound thinker, and hold his own with him. So long as a small residue of insight remains, however, one would do well to avoid resorting to this emergency help. And seen in the light of day, this appeal is nothing other than a call to the judgment of the multitude, applause at which the philosopher blushes, but at which the popular wag becomes triumphant and defiant. So. You see, the point that Kant's making is that someone who appeals to common sense is ultimately making the ad populum mistake that Jack himself is guilty of in the, his video reply to you, where he says that 
Christians, theists, are in the majority, as if that was relevant. Um, what the majority of people think about logic or consistency is completely irrelevant to the topic at hand. Um, Azrenach was, rightly, though maybe over-sophisticatedly, if that's a word, um, calling your attention to this. He wasn't trying to muddle the conversation, he was trying to clarify it. And I think that if we do pay attention to our words and we're careful with what we mean, then we can create a common ground, a common understanding by which the conversation can advance. But simply appealing to common sense is ultimately asking for um, the, the opinion of the masses to be the standard whereby your words are judged. And in a philosophical conversation, which is the nature of the conversation you're having, uh, that's simply um, not going to cut it.